Hey, how's it going? Uh, quick video, hopefully quick, of uh, how I set my OBS settings for flight simulation. So what I've done is I've actually taken some screenshots because uh, when you're, I'm using OBS to record this, and it won't let me show you everything while the application is actually running. Uh, so basically what we're seeing here is a screenshot of both the main window, and then I've clicked on the settings, which has brought up uh, the actual... Uh, settings windows with the tabs on the left so in general I basically switch my theme to dark because I just prefer it that way if you leave it standard I guess it uh, shows as white uh, so it's the one picture right then uh, I also leave off my preview I just figure why waste another resource uh, on the video card and some people had claimed that it actually can be unstable but that might be older versions of OBS I'm not really sure I'm running studio 18.01 by the way okay so uh, let's go to the next picture I took. It's going to look almost the same. However, you're going to see that uh, in the second picture, I've now selected the Output tab. So that's where we can make some setting changes. I switched my mode to Advanced, which gives me more options to play around with. Around with rather. And uh, what I have here is the uh, codec from the video card itself. The other choice is X264. So X264 will run off of the CPU and the N uh, V E N C is the codec from NVIDIA. Now, if you're not running an NVIDIA card, I don't know what comes up, so I couldn't really give you information on that. Um, the previous criticisms were that the X264 off the CPU runs smoother, especially in fast paced, scene changing environments with a lot of action, and the uh, NVIDIA encoder was more blocky in those actions. Um, and then later later comments have been made that the NVIDIA encoder has come a long way. I don't have a comparison of what it used to be versus what it is now. I do notice though that uh, no matter what settings I use my NVIDIA encoder, there's always a little bit of blocking on my fast flybys. However, in the world of flight simulation, especially flying general aviation and airliner streams, I've found that typically the scene is moving at a normal pace where I didn't necessarily uh, you know, see the blocking on a constant basis where it bothered me. So that's obviously personal preference. Uh, in, and I'm going to show you another setting in a minute related to the X264 CPU settings. So just stand by for that. But under the NVIDIA choices or the NVIDIA encoder, when you have this selected, uh, this rescale output is set for now just to 1080, but you can see it's grayed out. And hopefully I remember to tell you why that is. But uh, if you have a choice to do that, I would just put that at 1080 for now, unless you want to do 720. Uh, the rate control, so there's a few choices, and this is constant bit rate. Uh, Twitch is currently recommending constant bit rate because when you use variable, the issue becomes that sometimes it will try to uh, go, from what I understand, it will go sort of a, to a lull. It'll slow things down, and then when you need it to speed things back up to a higher bit rate, it can lag, so it can cause problems. So the constant bit rate is supposed to solve that. Latest uh, Twitch in spring 2017, they've upgraded some services, I guess, so that everybody's recommended to stream between 3,500 to 6,000. Previously, the limit was 3,500, but they seem to have upped that, and I've definitely noticed some quality improvements. Uh, key frame interval. So that's a thing that I haven't been able to find any information on, and anybody that finds, you know, that knows more than what I'm showing here, feel free to put in the comments section and some documentation. I've read through the OBS documentation, I've watched a ton of videos, and I've never really found certain, th a lot of things are still lacking, both in the documentation as well as videos online, is like, what if I change this to one or three or zero, well, zero is auto. You know, like, what does that actually do? How am I going to see those differences? It's, it's kind of frustrating. So I'm just sharing the latest that I've known from watching a million different videos. Okay. Uh, left the preset uh, to default. Now, if I'm going to show you the next picture, if you click on that uh, default, uh, you got high quality, high performance, Blu ray, low latency, uh, low latency, high quality, high performance. I've tried a few of these and have had a difficult time under the uh you know nvidia codec to really see a difference in how it performs on my flight simulation so again if somebody has an you know articulate way of describing this for us 
feel free to leave that in the comment section. All right, so coming back over here for a minute. Uh, profile, I left that on main and uh, level auto. See, again, I don't know exactly what these are going to change. There's just recommended settings that you can find online, but no real explanation, which I'd love to have. If you switch the encoder to your CPU, which I've tried, right? So now the criticism was that uh, the encoder for the video card still has blocking issues I, I refer to it as macro blocking uh, or blocking and basically like those high paced high uh, fast paced uh, flyby scenes or if you're like in an action game it's constant motion right then you're gonna see a lot of blocking potentially you know it gets like just like a blurry low resolution look to it so if you set this to x264 it'll run off your CPU Okay, which I've done. However, then you have to tweak the um, uh, the choice under the CPU usage. And it's kind of weird because when you think of very fast, right, uh, versus very slow, you would think, okay, if I move it slower, it's not going to perform as well. But actually, it does. In other words, the, the slower settings, right? So when you move it from ultra fast, super fast, very fast, faster, fast, medium, slow, and whatever. I don't even understand what the concept of placebo is. But the slower the setting, okay, basically what that means is I guess that potentially you're going to run, you're going to slow everything down in a way. In other words, you're going to maybe get slower frame rates. I don't know how you'd want to really rec uh, verbalize that. But basically, when you put this to lower or slower settings, you're using more CPU, and actually the scene becomes smoother. And that is true. So when you want to take advantage of the CPU codec and you want a cleaner image in the fast-paced scenes, you want to choose something that is like down in the very fast, faster, fast, medium. The, the more you go down this direction, toward the slower, the smoother your flyby will be in flight simulation or high action scenes. It's going to be less blocking. However, you're going to run more resources off your CPU, basically, and therefore it might impact two things, your frame rate and what I noticed is temperature spikes. So what I kept noticing when I was running, like I tried fast and faster. I never even bothered with medium because it really just started to tax the system. I did notice that, yes, the macro blocking was definitely less. It was a smoother flyby. Uh, however, then I heard my fans in my computer shooting up, you know, spiking because the temperature ranges set for the automatic fan engagement were basically, you know, driving me nuts because every time I did a flyby or something or just some other kind of workload was happening, all of a sudden I saw the, uh, the I would hear the fans running pretty loud. Uh, of course, that could be adjusted as well, but I didn't really want to get into that just yet. So the other thing that really kind of drew me back to working off of the video uh, card codec was that in addition to the fans making a lot of noise, I did notice that in X-Plane 10, uh, the extra CPU power needed to try to process the scene was actually slowing my simulation down. It was making it stuttery. So what's the trade-off? Either you have a nice smooth flyby, but in the broadcast it might show a couple, you know, a second or two of some blocking on the aircraft going by, or choppy scene altogether. A, a non-blocky choppy scene of an airplane flying by to me is much more distracting to the viewer and myself uh, compared to a nice smooth flyby with, uh, you know, with a little bit of blocking around it. Now, some of you might be listening to this and say, oh, I got a solution to that. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Fine. Feel free to post it. would love to see that. So that's been my experience. I'd love to just know some more solutions to that uh, issue. If you guys have it, uh, feel free to share it. So that's basically been, you know, my experience between choosing the... Uh, CPU codec versus the video card codec. All right, but uh, then the last slide here I'm showing you is off of the video. So we were, you know, we were obviously looking at the output section, which we do a lot of different settings. Okay, 
So all that stuff. These numbers I left alone. I would love to see some really good explanations as to what these actually mean. B frames, GPU. Again, every time I've read about it, watched videos, even looked at OBS manual, got nothing really of use to me. Um, and everybody sort of just brushes over it like I am right now. But then this other setting here. So this is your actual video, what you're doing. Now I run a 4K monitor and I watch my stream, my actual flights in 4K. Uh, but what I'm out scaling it to the community is at 1080. Now some people say, well, let's just run 720 because um, it runs even smoother. So that's obviously your choice. Uh, if you watch any of my streams, uh, I, I think that it runs fairly nicely at 1080 and I uh, get a lot of compliments on how sharp it looks. Uh, the Langzos sharpening scaling, I've left it at 32 samples. It says like, you know, when you click on this, this is obviously a picture I can't really click on, but basically uh, when you do click on that, there's a few other choices. And I think it said like this was the best or something like that. So I don't know, I chose that. It seems to work really well. And then the common uh, frames per second values. I'm usually I'm right now running 30. I know some people are successfully running 60. So I might try and switch to that, but I haven't done that just yet. But this will basically, I believe, sets your output frames per second, if I remember correctly. So if I, if that's a mistake, then feel free to correct me on that. Uh, other than that, that's really basically my settings for my stream that I use that I feel work pretty nicely. Let me get out of this and just see if there's anything else that we need to look at that I might have missed. So you see when I bring up the actual settings while this is recording, it won't actually let me, uh, by the way, I use, uh, for my, you know, uh, from to choose my server, I'm in New York, so it's like here I am on Virginia. I'm not, I didn't choose New York, uh, and the reason why that is is usually what I'll do is I'll run the twist, uh, Twitch test application, uh, Twitch bandwidth test version 1.3. I just deselect these servers, I stick to the United States, and then I click on start, and then it starts. You know, I'm looking for the highest upload speed and then the quality you know the best quality so what i saw in a video i watched was you want the highest number here then the highest quality and then the rtt i forgot what that stands for but basically the lowest number so it's kind of like in order you want the highest upload then you want if you if it was a tie then i'm looking at the highest quality and then if that was a tie between these two then this would be like the tiebreaker, so to speak, the lowest number on this. Typically, for me, it's been Virginia quite a bit, so I hope this video doesn't make a lot of people start going over there. Huh. But anyway, see that? Really nice 19, 10 plus. And usually this comes out between 98, 99. I've never seen 100, but uh, like New York, sometimes it's up there, but it bounces back and forth. Understandably, yeah, there it is, 99. Sometimes, you know, I guess the popularity of New York, maybe it's dragging it down a little bit. So you get the idea. Uh, cool application is free. You know, look for it online, download it. Uh, let's see the advanced. I didn't cover anything from there, but these are about basic settings. And uh, so you can have a look at that. Pause your video. See if they, they're similar to yours. Hotkeys. I just have an end key in there. Uh, let's see video. We said that. You see, I can't change anything while we're actually recording. A audio. I didn't really touch on, but these are basically my settings. I don't think I really changed much of anything. Uh, output, as we mentioned, as you can see, some of this is grayed out now, so I can't change anything there. And, and we already went over that. Okay, so hopefully you guys find this video a little bit helpful. Please, if you know of anything that, uh, in addition to what I've posted, or you have links to other videos that really show more detail uh, in some of those areas, feel free to share them in the comments below. Hope this was helpful.